Hi, I'm Norman Fenton, and in this very short video, I'm going to show how easy it is to create the illusion of high efficacy for a treatment that actually has no efficacy at all, such as a placebo. It's a highly contrived and simplified example, but it illustrates a very real problem regarding the way claims of efficacy, for example for vaccines, are made in the real world. So imagine a non-fatal disease, which in every two-week period infects 10% of the people previously uninfected. So suppose people receive a vaccine that is supposed to protect against the disease two weeks after it's taken, but which is actually a placebo. We're going to observe some people who get the vaccine and some who don't. So here are 100 people we observe who, who get the vaccine and 100 who don't get the vaccine. So we know that in each group, 10%, that's 10 out of 100, are going to be infected in the first two weeks. So in the vaccine group, 10 out of the 100 are going to be infected. And in the no vaccine group, 10 out of the 100 are going to be affected because it's a placebo. It doesn't make any difference. Now, in each group, 10%, that's 9 out of the 90 previously uninfected, are going to be infected in weeks 3 to 4. So there's... 9 out of the remaining 90 in the vaccine group are going to get infected and 9 out of the remaining 90 in the no vaccine group are going to get infected. So overall, 19 out of 100 in each group get infected over the four-week period. And efficacy, which is defined as 1 minus the proportion of vaccinated infected over the proportion of unvaccinated infected as a percentage, is just 0%. But suppose those infected in the first two weeks after vaccination are classified as unvaccinated. Then we're going to move those 10 people from the vaccine group who were infected in the first two weeks and classify them as unvaccinated. And what does that mean? Well, overall now, 9 out of 90 are considered vaccinated or infected. That's 10%. But now, 29 out of 110 classified as unvaccinated are infected. And that's 26.4%. So the efficacy now is 62%. But things can get even more ridiculous. So it's quite common for those who are classified as vaccinated, which in this case would be everyone who got the vaccine after two weeks, are less likely to be tested for the disease than those who don't get the vaccine. So for example, in the big observational trial of the Pfizer vaccine in Israel, each unvaccinated person was six times more likely to be tested in any given week than a vaccinated person. So suppose only one in three of the vaccinated people get tested, then that leaves us with just three out of the 90 classified as vaccinated are found to be infected. So we only find 3.3% of the vaccinated who get infected. But of course, we've still got our 29 out of 110 unvaccinated who are infected, 26.4%. And now the efficacy has pushed up to 88%, even though it's simply a placebo. It turns out that efficacy will appear even greater if there are more unvaccinated than vaccinated. So here's our 500 in the vaccine group and 100 still in the no vaccine group. So 50 out of the 500 are going to be infected in weeks 0 to 2. There's the 50. And 10 out of the 100 are going to be infected in the vaccine group. But of course, 45 out of the 450 previously uninfected are going to be infected in weeks 3 to 4. There's our 45 coming down there. And 9 out of 10 previously uninfected from the no vaccine group are going to be infected in weeks 3 to 4. So they come down there. So again, those infected in the first two weeks after vaccination are classified as unvaccinated. So they all get moved over there. So over here, we've got 45 out of the 450 vaccinated infected. That's the same 10%. But over here, we've got 69 out of 150 unvaccinated are infected. That's 46%. And the efficacy is already up to 78%. And of course, if we only tested a third of the unvaccinated, that efficacy will go up even higher.